Today, we become legends. Hey, my name's Inter, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be doing something that's a very highly requested video from me, and that's going to be an item tier list. So I'm going to be ranking every item in Smite against each other. I'm going to be ranking them like category-wise, I suppose. So like starter items will be ranked against starter items, not against all the item pool. Otherwise, like every starter item would just be an S plus item. And the same thing goes with Gliss, which I'll probably do at the end. I think I'll do all the normal items and then add Gliss in at the end, because they're not really items. They're more just like extensions to items. And again, Gliss will be ranked against each other, not against like actual full items. So a quick explanation of the tiers here s plus is going to be your best in slot items for what they do pretty much your must builds in their respective archetypes s tier items are going to be solid items that are worth considering for many builds but aren't necessarily essential a tier items above average items that round out the final few slots in your build once better items from s plus and s tier have been built b tier below average items that often have better alternatives or are somewhat situational or god dependent C tier, most of these items aren't really worth building, but might have some minor situational value or specific god synergies. And D tier, trash items, there's almost no point building these, they have better alternatives for the same slot in your build. But right, with that said, this is probably going to be a long one ranking every single item because I do want to go into a little bit of explanation of why I'm placing items in certain slots. Let's just get right into this. So I think what we'll do first up is we'll grab all the starter items and rank those first in like a, in like a bulk and then we'll do the rest of the items after that. So first starter item up here is Animosity. I would say this is like a B tier item probably because it does have some situational value on like certain picks, but it's really not like a must build, especially when you're considering it as a support starter. Of course, Animosity is generally not built on your typical supports. It's built on like maybe some auto attacking supports that want more damage late game or it's just picked up when you completely neglect a starter and buy this at level 15. It's a decent item but overall I think there are better choices for your build for the most part. Archmage's gem I would say probably A tier. Uh, Archmage's it's an interesting item. I think it's being overshadowed a little bit by Sands of Time at the moment, and that's why I'm not putting it in higher tiers. But you can't really go wrong with extra burst damage on a mage, and I do think this is a solid option if you want to go that route. Uh, Bloodsuck Shroud. So it got buffed in the most recent patch, and we're yet to kind of see the impacts of those buffs. But prior to this patch, I would say this is probably like a B tier item. You know, it does have some situational value on certain Bruiser Mage picks, like uh, John Quee. Obviously, that's going to shift a little bit because they made it a little bit more damage focused in the current patch than it was before, and removed a little bit of the tankier stats. But still, it's generally going to be one of those more bruiser things. Uh, obviously decent on magical solos as well, guardian solos like Arteo that can proc it many times per ability. But overall, I would say Bloodstock Shroud is fairly situational. Uh, Bluestone Brooch, I think it's got to be at least S, maybe even S+. plus. This is definitely one of the better starter items in the game. Of course, with these starter items, I'm considering the initial version of it as well. So like uh, if the initial version is significantly better, then that obviously bumps up the tier two versions as well, because it means your early game is going to be a bit more smooth. Because as with the regular tier three items, I'm not going to be ranking any of the like initial versions of the items. I'm not going to be ranking the initial starter items, just the upgrades. Uh, as for Bluestone, I think for now I'll put it in S, but it could potentially move up to S+. plus. It is really a kind of best in slot item for the ability-based solo lane category, and even some ability-based hunters will want this as well. And of course, in general, it's the better upgrade of Bluestone for sure. So moving on here, we have the Bumbers. So Bumbers Hammer, I think is probably like an A-tier item. I think it's the better upgrade of Bumbers at the moment. That cooldown reduction is quite nice, but in general, Bumbers isn't what people are going. Most people are going Eye of the Jungle instead. And Bumbers Spear, I think I will put it in the same tier, to be honest. I think it's a little bit worse than Bumbers Hammer, but not worse enough that I would drop it down to B tier with these two. Like, I think it, it does belong in A tier, uh, along with the rest of these. Obviously, solid item gives an absolute shit ton of objective damage, and uh, that that buff that it gives after killing a jungle camp is actually very powerful, but I do think Bobber's Hammer is slightly better. And you know what? Maybe I should be ranking these in pairs, actually. So let me quickly grab, like, the actual pairs for all these. So Compassion, definitely the better version. Uh, Compassion, arguably could be S+. Plus. Again, like Bluestone Pendant, I think it's quite a go-to for supports. Has been a lot, although people are shifting a little bit more towards Sentinels now. Uh, but still a very solid support option. Uh, let's grab Redstone if we can find it. Yeah, here's Redstone. I think Redstone is, like, potentially even C tier. I really don't think it's that great of an option. Like, it does have some situational value, but I don't even think it's as good as these two. Like, these two are more applicable than Redstone a lot of the time. Uh, but then again, it has so much attack speed, and like, in the situations where it's good, it's really good. So maybe it should be here. Yeah, it's really hard to put an item that has 50% attack speed and a bunch of other stats uh, down in C tier. So I think I'll drop it in B tier for now. But it is very hard to like actually slot this into your build in like the correct situation. Like you need to be a somewhat ability based auto attack hybrid god. And you also need high enemy attack speed on the enemy team. Like multiple hunters or something like that. Or a hunter and a mercury. 
And that's just a really hard situation to fit in because obviously the base upgrade of this is really ability based and in the laning phase you're going to want to have strong abilities to make use of this but then you're also going to want strong auto attacks because of the attack speed that it gives. It's just kind of a, it's a weird item that's difficult to fit into your build but I think it can be powerful in the right situation so maybe B tier is right for it. And here we have Sacrificial Shroud. Uh, I think this is just straight up C tier. Uh, it's, it's kind of a fun item. But it's a bit of a meme item as well. I think in most situations, you're going to be better going Blood Soak Shroud. Like, it's just losing health to be able to do damage. It, it's a nice idea, but oftentimes it just puts you in too much danger in Smite. And if you don't have a ton of lifesteal to heal that up, like, maybe on Anubis, this could be kind of okay. But even then, Anubis doesn't really necessarily like the tier 1 of this starter option. So, I just think it's incredibly situational to the point where you would almost never build it on anyone. So, C tier is probably where it belongs. It's not quite D tier. Like, you're not completely never buying this item, I don't don't think but it's definitely worse than a lot of these other options all right next up we have the death tolls so death's embrace i think i think we'll drop it in s for now again i'm, I'm hesitant to put items in s plus because they are like literally straight up most builds like you can't build any other option pretty much and they're like best in slot uh, and I'm hesitant to put something up there. But Death's Temper, obviously seeing Major play in ADC right now is pretty much the main starter item that people are going for, the main option. That 35% increased basic attack damage, especially with the current crit builds, because it applies to the crit, is like insanely strong right now. But you also have Death's Embrace, which I think is not quite as good, but again, probably similar to Bumba's. I think it still belongs in the same tier. It's just not quite as good. Uh, Death's Embrace sees a lot more play on basic attack solo laners that want that sustain, so like uh, Bologna's, Erlang Shen's, all that kind of stuff. And in the past, it has seen play on ADCs as well that want a bit more lifesteal, but in the Devil's meta, you honestly don't even need this, and you're better off going Death Temper, and then uh, going into crit builds and stuff like that. So Death Temper is definitely the better option right now, but Death Embrace has been the better option in the past. So I think they're, they're pretty close here and belong in the same tier. All right, we have the Axes. So Hero's Axe, I think, is a genuinely underrated item. I think it's really strong, but it is a little bit situational, which is why I think I'm going to drop it in A and not S tier. So the stats on this are really good like it has a ton of protections a ton of health 30 percent crowd control reduction i believe which is just really good stats in general and then the passive is just super useful as i said it's a bit more situational because you generally want it on a soul laner that's like either going to be diving heavily and synergizing with their jungler so you can give the jungler that shield from the passive or it's going to be useful on soul laners that are a little bit more in the back line and can give their carries that passive obviously you can't really get away with building this on supports it would be nice for the late game but you kind of need a green starter on supports to be able to get that gold throughout the game and so hero's axe if it was on a green starter, I think it would be significantly better, basically. But uh, its current state is a little bit situational, but the stats are really good and the passive is nice as well. Sundering Axe is probably the better version. Uh, whether it deserves to be an S, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's quite as good as Bluestone Pendant, but I would say it's definitely better than Hero's Axe. I'm not ordering these, by the way. They're not going to be ordered in each tier because that would just be absolute madness trying to order every single item. Uh, they're just going to be in the tiers on their own. But uh, for the record, I do think Sundering Axe is better than Hero's Axe, but not enough better to be, to be like a tier above and obviously this is the more aggressive one of the two doing that extra damage and uh sealing health and stuff as opposed to heroes axe giving your teammates shields uh lono's mask technically a starter now uh lono's is really good again i will probably put it in a though because it is quite situational but like the stats that it gives it does hamper your early game damage a little bit because often on those aggressive support picks like assassins and mages that you want the early game damage on buying Lono's Mask kind of like sacrifices that early game damage a little bit, but it is one of the best late game tank options in the entire game. Uh, that mitigation passive, insanely powerful. The stats it gives are really good, and it truly does turn those assassin and mage supports into full on tanks late game. They are just as hard to kill as a guardian when you have this item, but of course, you do suffer a little bit of that damage in the early game. Uh, once you can get enough protections in the late game for this to work and remove all of the uh, negative damage, you, your damage kind of goes back up a little bit, but in the early game, when you're just getting straight up reduce damage from this it can be a little bit rough and Rangda's mask uh, we'll put it in like I, i'm tempted to put it in d like really Rangda's mask is just absolute trash and only a troll pick i think maybe i will just put it down here to be honest like just taking increased damage in smite it's similar to sacrificial shroud in a way but like much worse because you just take straight up increased damage from everything rather than dealing damage to yourself with abilities it's just really not something you want to you want to be doing to be honest uh Rangda's, it's a fun item it's good to troll with but i really won't recommend building it if you're actually trying to make like serious competitive builds uh, so we have the arrows diamond arrow i think it's underrated a little bit um i think i will drop it in a tier because this item stats are just really good once you do get it stacked up in a team fight and it stacks fully off of one kill which is really nice 
You know, I think it has like 80 basic attack damage or something, which is roughly equivalent to 80 power for a late game hunter. Like most late game hunters, they don't really care too much about ability damage. So it pretty much is equivalent to 80 power or maybe slightly less. And then the 75% attack speed that this can give, that's an insane amount of attack speed and could be really good in silver branch builds actually. Ornate Arrow is an interesting one because once fully stacked, once you're holding that full amount of gold, it gives some of the best stats in the entire game. Like it's an absolutely ridiculous pile of stats, this item. But the one problem with it is that you have to hold that amount of gold in your hand. I can't remember how much it is but it's somewhere around 2000 or something like that so you're really having to like hamper your build obviously like you're not going to get the full stats of this item online until your full build and like even then you might want to buy like a 3k power potion and then you're going to lose the stats of this item so it's just a little bit difficult to fit in your build which is why i think i'm going to drop it in b tier uh, it's a little bit weird to use but it's hard again kind of like redstone it's kind of hard to put it any lower than b tier because of the insane amount of stats that it can provide but it's just a little bit difficult to get those online and keep them online uh, a lot of the time uh, we have pendulum of the ages obviously i think yeah i'm not really sure what i'm going to put in s plus if i'm not going to put some of these like really powerful ones like pendulum and bluestone and death temper in s plus so maybe i'll shift some of these around yeah i think i'll do that so maybe we'll move bluestone and death temper up here and then maybe like sundering axe goes up there maybe archmages as well yeah i think this looks more right so with these up in s plus now uh onto pendulum of the ages obviously the go-to starter item it's been the go-to starter item for mages for a long time provides 20 percent cooldown which is obviously really useful for you and just a shit ton of power like it's just cooldown and power it's a better version of chronos pendant it's something that all mages want and all mages have been building like all standard ability mages of course have been building in the mid lane for a long time it's just one of the best starter items in the game at the moment uh the alternate timeline though whether it's c or d i'm not really sure maybe i'll be generous and put it in c but really to be honest it should probably be in d like the passive just really isn't that useful it's pretty much just like a, an aegis amulet on an insanely long cooldown because a lot of the time, if you're dying in a fight, being able to revive a few seconds later isn't actually going to save you. Like, most of the time, if you die, like, you're out of position or you're getting dived. And, like, it's different to a Kepriol because with a Kepriol, it revives and repositions you. But you're just reviving in place with this item. And it often means that people can just continue diving you and just kill you straight afterwards. And it ultimately doesn't really do that much for you. And it's weaker in stats compared to a lot of the other starter options. I mean, like, the one in the same tree, Pendulum of Ages, that's just way better, in my opinion. And it also hampers your damage a lot because this thing comes with, like, a lot of protections and maybe some health, if I remember correctly. But to be honest, I've never built this item. Uh, it just doesn't really seem that good to me. Uh, we have the Sentinel's tree. So Sentinel's Boon is fine. I don't think I would even put it in BT. I think it's like just a solid item to be honest, but generally doesn't get built uh, for the reason that Sentinel's Embrace is just better. Whether or not Sentinel's Embrace deserves to be up here, I'm not sure. I think at launch it probably did, but uh, it's been nerfed a little bit. I think I'll put it here for now, but yeah, Sentinel's Embrace is generally the better option of these two. Uh, that, that AoE protections aura that you can give to your backliners is really strong. Like, you combine it with Sovereignty, Gauntlet of Thieves, Heart Ward auras and stuff, and your teammates become, like, insanely tanky. Like, they have, like, 100 protections on your squishies in the backline, which does reduce damage substantially against people. And Sentinel's Boon, it gives a lot of regen, like, a lot of regen. I think it's a bit underrated how much regen it gives, like, I think... How much is it exactly? Let me look it up. Yeah, so it's 4% max health and mana every time something dies near you, which is kind of insane. Like, if you, someone just kills a full minion wave right next to you, you get 24% health and mana back. So it basically gives you infinite mana. It gives you a lot of health sustain as well. It is a strong item, but I do think it's uh, slightly outclassed by Sentinel's Embrace. Uh, we have the sigils so i think sigil again is a little bit underrated i think most people are just like oh it's kind of trash just always build bluestone and always build sundering axe but especially with this one the sigil of the old guard uh damage mitigation is really powerful like damage mitigation should never be underrated like as we saw with the spirit road meta a little while back like having percent damage damage mitigation like that is just really good so i think this item probably honestly deserves an a tier placement i think it is on the level of a lot of these other ones where like it's buildable but not necessarily the best option infused sigil i think is uh quite a bit the damage it does is pretty substantial but of course when you consider it in comparison to other starter items and not just comparison to like regular tier 3 items it's not that insane and i do think the damage mitigation is better on this one so i think i'll put it in b tier and i think situationally it can be decent it could be a really fun item to be honest that huge burst damage is super cool but uh not necessarily the best item in the world to be building all right we have the war flags so i think the war flags are like not that great to be honest uh the standard war banner like obviously these are the aggressive support options like if you're trying to really push your aggression in the lane and in the team fights you're going to be wanting to build these but in general they're just massively outclassed by these other support options like compassion and sentinels embrace because uh, you really want that kind of like defensive capability for your team as a support you don't necessarily want to be going all aggressive all the time it can work especially in like lower levels of play it can absolutely work but uh, i think they probably don't even warrant being in a to be honest because i think sentinel's boon is still better than both the war flags uh, and i think 
Where is Wall Banner? Here's Wall Banner. Wall Banner is worse. I think Wall Banner probably deserves to be in C. Like, the thing that he drops down, the AoE radius is decently big, but the fact they drop something down that if the team fight moves out of, like, that kind of area is completely useless, I just don't think it's that good of an item. It's just a little bit unreliable and, like, hard to get, like, full value out of in team fights. So, Leader's Cowl is probably, like, here. Uh, the bonus power is kind of nice, but realistically, if you're buying it on a Hunter, which is usually who you're going to be buying it on, you're only really giving power to your mage. Like, if you're giving power to your backline support, like, percent power, it's almost nothing because they don't have any power anyway so realistically you're only like increasing your own power and your mage's power by doing this and it's kind of a little bit understated to be honest compared to a lot of other starter items and you're usually just better off building this one uh which i think i'll drop in a tier i think it's a pretty solid option uh generally you're better off building death toll in the current meta but in the past this has been kind of the meta for adcs maybe i should even bump it up here to be honest yeah i think i'll do that this item's really good like the stats it provides are just really good for hunters you have a ton of physical power you have 35 percent attack speed if you're near an ally and obviously some extra movement speed if you're not comes with some lifesteal as well the base form is pretty solid for learning just in general a really solid option but just being outclassed a bit by uh, the death tolls at the moment uh the mannequins so mannequin mace is kind of meh to be honest uh it's, it's decent i suppose it, it does decent damage but uh the better option in my opinion is mannequin hidden blade which i'm actually going to throw up here that might be a little bit of a spicy take but uh i really do kind of like mannequin hidden blade i think it's really good in the late game the only problem with this item that makes it not like s plus or something is that mannequins in the early game for junglers is just generally quite hard to fit in your build uh, only a few gods can really use it that well and even in general like those gods that can use it well it's not necessarily even their best like starter option for like the early game jungling but the payoff is that you get to build mannequin hidden blade in the late game which is really insane like that huge burst damage that you get on entering combat is just really strong and finally we have the eyes of the jungle so seer of the jungle for most people is the c tier item like, maybe pros and, like, high-level ranked players could make a bit more use of it, and it might get bumped up to B or A, but for most people, this item's pretty trash. The, the vision it gives isn't worth losing the amazing stats that Protector of the Jungle can give you, which I think is just an S-plus tier item. Like, this this item gives an insane amount of stats. Tons of power, 35% attack speed for some reason, so that's just absolutely insane. Even on gods that don't necessarily need the attack speed, it's still really good. You know, on AA cancel junglers like Thor, Thanatos, uh, all those kind of gods. And, of course, that insane passive that provides 12 percent power and 15 percent protections while in the jungle most team fights in the late game do take place in the jungle they might extend into the lanes a little bit and if you're sieging obviously this passive isn't going to be online but if you're fighting over fire giant or just trying to get a pick in the jungle or something this passive is going to be active and it's one of the most stat effective starter items in the entire game to be honest definitely the best jungle option right now uh, for sure and that should be all the starter items there so uh if you want to like take a screenshot of this or whatever if you want like just a list for only the starter items and not the tier 3 items because i'm going to be removing all these now and then ranking the tier 3 items oh i just realized i didn't rank tainted steel i've already removed them all but i would say the tainteds are like this one's probably B, Tainted Breastplate's a little better, I would say it's probably A. Uh, they're both quite situational, of course, uh, you need to have a team with healing, but uh, in general, if they do have a team with healing, these are pretty solid options for Soul Inners. Uh, I wouldn't really build these anywhere else, but uh, Soul Inners are, for the most part, where you're going to be building these. Oh, it would seem I also didn't rank Gem of Focus. Uh, Gem of Focus also really good, I'll probably put it in A tier. Uh, it's a little bit situational on who you build it on. Because on a lot of the mid lane mages, you just want Archmage's gem because it's generally a better option to have more burst. But this is really good on like a lot of solo laners that have easy ways to proc it and want a little bit of that damage mitigation movement speed like kind of utility stats. And even on some mid laners, it can be good as well. But in general, Archmage's gem is preferred. All right, so let's kick things off with the Morningstar tree. Let's just get them all in here. So Heartseeker first up. I think Heartseeker is a really strong item. Uh, they buffed it in a recent patch. No, really, no real idea why, to be honest. Uh, I think... It's probably not quite an S plus tier item, like it's not essential in every build, but for the ability based gods that like this item, it's really strong for them. Just extra damage on every ability, uh, it's percent max health damage as well, so really good for shredding tanks, which ability based assassins and some warriors have a lot of uh, trouble dealing with as well. Uh, Hydra's Lament, again, a really solid item, but I might drop it down to A purely because it's a little bit situational, like you mostly only want this on uh, ability auto attack cancelling characters. So like your Thors, your Dajis, your Thanatos, all those kind of gods, uh, but where it's good, it's really really good like this item is very solid uh dominance again i'll probably put it in a for a different reason in that it's just like it's not that insane of an item but in certain builds that want a lot of um penetration on their basic attacks on some hunters and even on some basic attacking assassins like kali it can be really good and transcendence probably in the same tier as heartseeker i would say uh it's a little bit risky to go sometimes because it does require stacks early game but very good on ability based hunters very solid on ability based assassin junglers as well if you can fit it in your build uh next up we have the mace tree so the Crusher, 
Solid item, I think. Uh, it's been nerfed quite a bit over the years. Whether it's S or A, I don't really know. To be honest, I think I'll probably drop it in S. Uh, it's a really solid early game penetration option. Uh, uh, very good for characters that want a little bit of attack speed. You know, not necessarily loads, but ability-based characters that benefit a little bit from attack speed. Like a lot of those auto-attack cancelers. Uh, Kali as well loves this item. Uh, Jotun's Wrath, S+. Plus. This item's just really good for the cost. It's the cheapest item on the tree, I believe, and just gives really good stats. 20% cooldown reduction, a bunch of power, and also has Gliss, which is a really big benefit. You know, late in the game, this item, you know, maybe not insane once you get to the late game, but you can put a Glyph on it and just make it really good anyway. So yeah, really solid item. Brawler's Beat Stick, A tier. Uh, situational, but when it is needed, it's really good. Uh, one of the premier anti-heal options in the game. Uh, solid, like, competitive stats, even with the anti-heal passive. You know, penetration and power are always going to be useful. And then Titan's Bane, S tier. Uh, it does what it does. You know, if you need this in your build, you need this in your build. I wouldn't call it situational, though, because a lot of the time, you will just need to main build this item, because you're going to need to be able to deal something to tanks in the late game as an ability best assassin or an ability based hunter and so titan's bane just kind of fills that slot really well it's like the best physical percent pen option in that slot really uh moving on to some crit options so rage i think is like a b tier item uh it's just crit chance and power and obviously it requires other crit chance items to like be good this item on its own is trash this item on its own is down here but the fact that it gives such powerful crit chance it can be decent in combination with some other crit items but it's very slow to come online and crit builds are already slow to come online so like if you're building this into deathbringer you know, that's a, a... I mean, Rage isn't super expensive, but it requires a long time to stack, and then you're building an expensive item in Deathbringer. It just makes your builds come online quite slow, and it's quite difficult to fit in your builds a lot of the time, but this item does give a lot of crit chance, so if you're looking for, like, a really high crit chance build, this item is buildable. Uh, as for Deathbringer, I think I have to put it in S. I don't think it's quite an S plus item, but... If you're building a crit build, you're building this item pretty much. Like, uh, it's got the it's got the crit glyphs, the only crit glyphs in the game. Uh, pretty solid glyphs as well. Malicious Deathbringer is... Uh, well, I mean, I'll talk about more about the glyphs in a little bit, actually. I'm not going to go too in-depth on the glyphs when I'm ranking the initial items, because I will be ranking all the glyphs uh, at the end of the video. But yeah, Deathbringer, one of the premier crit options. If you're building crit, you probably have this in your build. Definitely a really solid item. Shadow Steel Shuriken, I will throw in the same tier as Brawler's Beat Stick. A really efficient anti-heal option for hunters if you're going for a crit build. Again, similar to Brawler's, it's not under statted for the cost it has really good stats for the cost to be honest with crit chance attack speed and power you know all stats you're going to want in a hunter crit build and then it just has anti-heal as well which is really good uh specifically this item is being built a lot right now because of the devos meta uh people are rushing it like second item just because anti-healing 40 percent of your enemies devos away and you, you're still healing the full 40 percent it's just really good wind demon probably s like this is an item that you can really just slot into pretty much any crit build it's, it's been a premier crit option for a long time uh, just really good stats, you know, attack speed, percent penetration, power, crit chance. It's everything you need in a hunter crit build. Uh, RC, pretty bad item to be honest. I probably wouldn't drop it in C, like it's not quite that bad. It is usable, but in general, there are better lifesteal options than this. You know, everyone's going devour as gauntlets right now. So in general, you're not going to need an RC. You're just opening up yourself to a little bit too much anti heal if you're going devos and RC. Uh, the passive is just a little bit unreliable. The stats aren't terrible, but uh, really it's just like not that great. Uh, Executioner, S tier, like th this is been a premier hunter percent pen option for literally years in this game like it's protection reduction as well so it will slightly increase the damage of your other physical teammates which can be relevant sometimes and also you can bypass the percent pen cap with this and also it has glyphs you know it has some really powerful glyphs uh, you know both the glyphs are good i'll talk about them more at the end of the video but both the glyphs to this item are solid which does one it off slightly as well and finally for this tree we have kin size uh, another s tier item uh similar to like these premium crit options kin size is the premium non-crit option like this has always been a solid a hunter item especially if you want to be treading tanks uh that percent max health damage is just really good uh almost pretty much never going to be outclassed uh the bulls we have ikeval it's okay i think the stats on it are really good and it's really good for like an early game boxing item but the problem is it just it doesn't really do that much for you in like your overarching build in terms of as you're going into the late game it's mainly like an early game option that you can be buying to like really out trade people super early on in the game and like get a lead via that silver branch bow See, it's situational, so I don't really want to put it in S, but the thing is, it's just got really bloated stats, so I'm going to put it in S anyway. Like, the thing is, its stats are just really good. Like, even if you're not getting too much value from the passive of this item, it comes with 20% pen, a bunch of attack speed, and a bunch of power. Like, that is just stats you want. Like, that's just really good. And it comes with, like, the, the percent pen just straight up up front, so, like, even your first attack will have that percent pen, whereas Executioner, for example, it has more percent pen overall or percent protection reduction, basically the same thing. Uh, but the thing is, you have to stack that up over several basic attacks, and so, like, your initial hits are hitting less hard with Executioner than they are with just Silver Branch. So, like, that, like, percent pen on the item is just really good. 
Atalanta's ball, probably not quite as good as these two crit options up here, but still a solid crit option if you want to go that route. Uh, just has generally really good stats. Like, this item's kind of bloated in its stats, to be honest, in a similar way to Silver Branch Bow, but probably not quite as bad. And finally, Odysseus Bow, probably down here as well. It's a really good supporting item for builds that maybe want to go into Silver Branch or builds that want to just go high, high attack speed with uh, Kin Size and stuff. You get a little bit of extra damage from Mobo Passive. Uh, this item's been nerfed a lot uh, over the years. I think the Passive got nerfed in its damage and it also got nerfed down from 40% to 30% attack speed, so all it has on this item now is 30% attack speed like the stats are really bad but the passive is really good so uh, I think I'll drop it in A. Previously to all the nerfs it probably would have been an S tier item though. Serrated so Edge really solid it got buffed recently which I don't think was needed um whether it's S tier I don't really know it probably is to be honest a really good percent pen option especially for auto attacking assassins but even some ability assassins can make use of this to be honest you know ones that want lifesteal a little bit more in their build uh percent pen lifesteal power movement speed just really good stats for auto attacking assassins this item's pretty premium Golden Blade will drop in A because it's quite situational. Uh, on the gods that do want it, like Nemesis, Kali, Mercury, uh, the gods that want to be able to clear with their basic attacks and not necessarily with abilities if they don't have like good ability camp clear, this item's really good. Uh, but obviously it's very niche to like a certain few gods in the game. It's a Katana, again, a pretty solid item, decent stats on it uh, for the cost. And obviously that really powerful passive that it gives you essentially here, allowing you to stick to people. Similar to Golden Blade, this is uh, like a really specific niche item for a certain few gods in the game. But on those gods, it's pretty good. Also, Stone Cutting Sword seems to be missing from this list. So I guess I'll like, uh, I'll just talk about that one. I'm not going to be able to put it on the tier list because it's missing. This isn't my like template. Someone else made this and they seem to have missed off Stone Cutting Sword. Uh, Stone Cutting is decent, but I will probably put it in like B tier. It's not really that great of an item right now. Uh, moving on to the Arthurian Tree, Arandite, I think is a really underrated item i think i would drop this in s uh, the stats are really good it gives a ton of power a little bit of cooldown reduction and then obviously that bonus damage and movement speed after ulting in it's a little bit niche like not every character necessarily wants this like this is mostly good on assassins and some warriors that can engage with their ultimate so like raven thor thanatos those kind of gods but on the gods it's good on is really good on in my opinion like mercury insane user of this item like really good now it's this good user of this item as well like it does work on a lot of uh, junglers which is why i'm not putting it down here like it's not that situational i'd say it probably works on at least half the junglers in the game if not more uh fail not really overstated crit option i think i'll probably drop it in s it could also go down to a potentially but i think this item is being a bit underrated right now just insanely bloated stats and a uh, really good effect as well pridwin solid option uh for a lot of the tanks in the game uh 20 cooldown makes it a little bit hard to build in certain tank builds because you might be overcapping cooldown but you can build around that and it's just really solid again it's similar to arendite it's only really good on certain characters that can like quickly burst off their ultimate in like a team fight and then get that shield but yeah really solid on a lot of supports and even on some solo enders as well and finally for the Arthurian items uh staff of murdin i think this is an s plus item right now it is getting nerfed in in the most recent patch but this item just gives an insane amount of stuff like magical penetration magical power bunch of damage on the passive like 25 percent increased damage and the way this item works with a lot of the ultimates in the game is that it actually increases the damage of the ultimate i think about half the ultimates in the game like half the mage ultimates anyway uh, th it, this works where it actually increases the damage of the ultimate as well as any follow-up abilities, which is just insane. I found a graphic on Reddit a little while back with who this works with, so I'll put that on the screen because there are some gods you don't want to be building this on, but on the gods that it is built on, it's just an absolutely insane item. Moving on to the shields. So Zerg shield, with the recent buffs, I think it's really solid. Uh, I'll probably put it in S. This is, uh, again, it's not something you're building on everyone, but on a lot of those auto attack based warriors and maybe even some auto attack based junglers if you want a bit more tankiness. This item's really solid. You know, attack speed, power, mitigations, uh, just a really solid item, to be honest. Glad shield, it's an S plus tier item. Like, this is really carrying a lot of the ability based soul and as right now in terms of just massively increasing their damage. The stats on it are honestly, like, half decent. Like, they're pretty good for the cost in terms of, uh, like, just bot and general like tanky stats but then that passive is just so solid like the amount of damage this item puts out in a team fight like you pop up your t screen and you've, you just realize you've taken like 400 damage from from the opponent's glad shield it's just a really good item right now void shield it's okay I think people do underrate this item a little bit. Not to say it's good, but people say it's like one of the worst items in the game, and I highly disagree with that. I think the percent pen on it is really solid. Uh, Shifter Shield, it's all right. Uh, it maybe could be in the same tier as Void Shield, but I think I'll drop it in B tier. It's just, it got nerfed a while back to where the stats just really aren't that good on it anymore. Like, it used to have, like, some of the highest power in the game, and that's kind of why people would build it. Like, when you were above 50% health, it would give you a lot of power. But uh, in general, the stats on this are just a little bit underwhelming for the cost. All right, moving on to some hammers. The sled edge it's a fine item i don't think it's really that great i'll probably drop it in a tier uh, actually looking at this now maybe i should move these things around a little bit because shadow steel is definitely a better item than a lot of the ones in here 
Maybe even Atalanta's as well deserves to be up there. Yeah, I might be shuffling around this tier list a little bit as I go along because uh, some of the items, like I realized that like some of the other ones I'm putting in this tier are like significantly weaker or stronger. Uh, yeah, Sledge probably belongs here. Like the stats are okay on it, basically. It's just a kind of like a big pile of stats item. You get some protections from the passive, you get health, you get power. Uh, it's okay, but like generally it's not like a, an amazing item, like it's not standout or anything. Frostbound Hammer, similar case, uh, a bit more situational, but a bit better of an item in general. Uh, all the gods you're building this on, like uh, basically just auto attack warriors pretty much. Uh, it's pretty solid, but it's quite a niche item. Runeforge Hammer, really good. Uh, super underrated item in my opinion. Uh, obviously it is a little bit situational on who you can build it on. You pretty much want to be building this on gods that have non-displacement CC chain. So gods like Thor, like a really good user of this item. But that extra damage when you have people CC change is just insanely strong. Blackthorn Hammer, uh, similar place to Sledge, to be honest. They're kind of like, they're very similar in terms of items. Blackthorn just has like a little bit more health, I think, and a little bit less protections. Comes with some cooldown reduction and MP5. In general, like you're just picking which one is better of Sledge and Blackthorn and kind of building that one. At the moment, I would probably say Blackthorn's ever so slightly better, but they're not really great items, to be honest, in general. Uh, Soul Eater probably deserves to be S+, plus, to be honest. Uh, Really driving the soul in meta at the moment, along with Glad Shield. Like, a lot of these ability-based warriors, they're just kind of abusing these two items to be, like, insanely strong. Like, the sustained soul eater provides is just ridiculous. It got nerfed recently, but I still think it's a really strong item for ability-based soul, and it's kind of driving the meta at the moment. Bloodforge, we'll drop it in A. Uh, it's a pretty decent item. Uh, I think it's a... People say it's, like, completely garbage because it requires kills, but, like, I don't think that's true. Obviously, it is situational. You're pretty much only going to be building this if you're quite far ahead and you think you can reliably get kills in team fights. but it can be, like, a great way to just completely snowball the game on people. Like, if you're really far ahead as a jungler, or maybe even as an ADC, but for the most part as a jungler with this item, uh, you can just buy this and, like, absolutely snowball a team fight into, like, a pretty easy, like, objective, like a fire giant or something, and that could just snowball you into a win, especially in lower levels of play. Devos, S plus tier. Uh, they added 10 pen to Devos for no reason. Uh, really strong item right now. Uh, just the stats for the cost on this item are probably some of the best in the entire game. Like, I can't remember exactly how much it costs, but I think it's around 2300 gold. And it gives 70 power, 24% or 25% lifesteal, and 10 flat pen. Like, that's just absolutely nuts stats. Uh, you're seeing this item occasionally in solo, but for the most part, it's an ADC item. Basically, every ADC in the game is building Devos right now, and if they can't build Devos, like Ulla or something, they're kind of falling out of the meta a little bit because Devos is so strong. This item's kind of warping the ADC meta right now and even creeping a little bit into solo and other roles. Just really fucking strong. Onto the earrings. Uh, Griffin Wing, we'll put it in B. It's a little bit understated for the cost because uh, the effect is quite powerful i suppose but really it's not that powerful like if you can hit basics in general you're not going to need this item too much it does make it a bit easier to hit basics for sure like it's not like the passive is useless or anything but uh generally you don't want to take the hit to your stats to be able to have this effect you'd rather just build like more stat efficient items like silver branch and atalantas and uh executioner whatever else Fableless Hoops, definitely S tier. Uh, taken a little bit of a nerf recently, but I mean, obviously on launch, these would have been an S plus tier item, but quite niche in terms of like, you're pretty much only building this on healer supports. Uh, healer mages can also make use of this, but you do sacrifice a little bit of damage if you're going to be going out on a healer mage, keep that in mind. But yeah, really solid item, provides a bunch of shields to your teammates. Very overstated, to be honest, for the cost. Manticore Spikes. S+. Plus. Again, similar to Glad Shield, this allows you to create damage out of tankiness, and that's a super powerful effect in Smite. Overstarted for the cost, even after the nerf of the cost, 2400 gold for the stats that this provides is really good, and the fact that the passive is also providing you an insane amount of damage. This is just one of the strongest items in the game right now. Pretty much any tank that has two hard crowd controls in their kit, you can make good use of this. If you have more than two hard crowd controls, insane for those, for those kind of gods. Sinx's Baubles, uh, it's just trash. It's just trash, to be honest. It had a while where it was, like, dominating the meta, but really, this item just... For 50% CDR, it's just not worth it. Like, the extra 10%... It just doesn't make enough of a difference that you ever want to build this item for the downsides that it gives. Like, even when they changed it to be, like, it removes protections now, which for squishies isn't that bad because it's only removing a few protections if you don't have that many. Just really, 50% CDR isn't worth it, to be honest. Like, oftentimes, it's just going to be removing, like, one or potentially two seconds off of your cooldowns. It's just not that good. All right, moving on to some mage damage items. So, Book of the Dead. We had a brief meta where this was, like, insanely strong. It got nerfed a little bit, but it's kind of been buffed a little bit recently back into viability. I think I'll drop it in A for now. It potentially could even be S tier, to be honest, but, uh... Just like a decent, decent item, to be honest. I wouldn't say it's essential in any build, but especially with Book of Thoughts becoming more popular right now, it, it could potentially even be S tier, but we're not really seeing it at the moment. Obviously, it adds a ton of survivability, but it does uh, lack a little bit of damage uh, for that survivability. 
Book of Thoth goes straight up there with Devils. One of the best items in the game right now. Adding 10 flat pen to it just makes it so insane in the early game. Like, once you get this stacked, it's almost like you don't even need to go one of these spears from down here because just you, you already have flat pen. Generally, you still might want to go a spear because then you'll have even more flat pen, but just having 10 flat pen plus a bunch of power, infinite mana, this item's like the go-to stacking item for mages right now, just the go-to item in general. Soul Reaver arguably could also be s plus i think i probably will put it there like really this is essential in every single mage build like even on gods that only have three damaging abilities you want this on gods that have four it's just insane it's pretty much the way mages like shred tanks in the late game you just buy soul reaver just a really good item polynomicon i'll put it in a it's useful on certain gods like some gods that can confirm it very easily off of their abilities like Scylla, like the morrigan like uh hebo even but it's not really essential and it's kind of situational on like you only build it on certain gods that can very easily confirm a basic attack afterwards kulka another good example of this item so good on certain gods not necessarily essential though rodder to Hootie, i think i'll drop it in s uh it's probably not quite an s plus item like this is good it's really good for like a late game luxury item obviously it has glyphs so that's a nice bonus for it and it's basically a gigantic power bomb. Like, that's what this item is. It's solid on a, in a lot of mage builds. It's not quite essential, I won't say, which is why I'm not dropping an S+. But you can never really go wrong with having a crap ton of extra power and dealing more damage as a passive. Chronos Pendant. S or A. I think I'll put it in A for now, purely because of the popularity of um, Pendulum of the Ages. So this item isn't necessarily bad, but the problem is, if you build Pendulum of the Ages and Chronos Pendant, you're already capped out on CDR, and it often limits your build options in other ways, and also uh, removes the benefit of the 10% CDR of Power Potions. So it's just a little bit hard to slot into your builds, that's why it's in A. It's not a bad item necessarily, and especially if you're not going Pendulum of the Ages in your build, if you're going Conduit Gem or whatever, this item can be really solid to get your CDR up. Caron's Coin, we'll drop it in A. Uh, it's kind of just like a worse version of obsidian shard because it's uh kind of a bit slower to come online it doesn't really make sense as an item necessarily considering you want to stack it but you also want it late game because it's a percent pen like if this item had flat pen if this was like 10 flat pen or 15 flat pen instead this will be a lot better an item in my opinion doom orb probably drop it in a as well it's a little bit niche you don't really see anyone but the morrigan building this because she wants that movement speed to be able to get into the back line like a lot of the mages really don't need the movement speed quite as much but it does have a lot of power like a lot of power so like on certain gods this can be useful uh, Divine Ruin, I think it pretty much has to go in the same tier as Brawlers. Provides the same thing, but for Magicals. Uh, efficient stats, but also the powerful anti-heal as well. Spear of Deso, so in my opinion, this is kind of like the default flat pen option that most mages should be going for if you don't need the answer heal from Divine Ruin. A ton of power, cooldown reduction, extra cooldown reduction on the passive, and flat pen. Just a really solid item, to be honest. Spear of the Magus, I'll probably drop in A. Uh, it's a little bit more situational on the gods that you want it on. You want it on generally mages that like hit with an initial ability and then can follow up with big damage so like on hebo it's okay because you can three into all and you get the bonus damage from that uh, anubis it's really good because all of his abilities are tick damage so like as soon as one of those ticks applies you get the bonus damage and every future tick of that same ability does the bonus damage so really good on tick gods as well but a little bit situational in general you're better off building spear of desolation and obsidian shard s tier uh again like just is a premier percent pen option in the late game you could argue this is kind of essential and maybe should go up to s plus but i don't think it's quite as good as a lot of the items that are up here like really obsidian shard is not on the level of like devos manticore spikes book of thoth uh, staff of murden glad shield all these items are like significantly better than obsidian shard but in, in general it is somewhat essential in mage builds if you want to be at a damage tanks late game the premier percent pen option uh rings so these rings kind of live and die together to be honest like uh Magical ADCs, if these rings are good, they're good. If they're not, they're not. Uh, Hasten Ring, I'll probably put in the same tier as Hasten Katana. It's just like a decent option. Uh, a lot of gods like Freya kind of rely on this a little bit to be able to kind of stick to people in fights. Demonic Grip, we'll drop it here as well. Uh, it's, it's just the percent pen option that you want to go on. Um magical adcs but obviously that's very situational there's only four magical adcs in the game and i don't think any other god will really use like any of these items which is why i can't put them much higher but four magical adcs these two are pretty good uh telkine's ring same thing ring of Hikate, i'm tempted to put it in s because i do think it is significantly better than these rings like early game this ring is like super good for getting your uh your boxing online you know power life steal reduces the enemy power just super good warlock staff we'll drop it in s it's being a little bit outclassed by book of thoth right now because the 10 flat pen when you evolve it is better than the 10 percent pen but of course before book of thoth got buffed uh warlock staff was kind of being the go-to option for a lot of these mages so i think it's still a very solid item and if you do want a little bit more tankiness you can go it over book of thoth but at the moment i think book of thoth is just objectively a stronger item e staff is decent uh it's mainly built on like guardian solos for the most part you generally don't want this on mages because you sacrifice a lot of damage for buying it but on a lot of the magical solos this is 
is a really solid item, but a little bit situational. Gem of Isolation, just not that good. Like, the passive slow effect really doesn't, like, have that much of an impact, and it's a little bit understated for the cost because of that. Just not really that great of an item. Rod of Asclepius, it's okay. I guess on, like, healer mids, you might want this, but it's kind of a weird item because... The stats for it aren't really that good for like a damage mage, but they're also not really good for like a tanky healer support either. It's kind of like an in-between item where it has some power and some tanky stats, and it just doesn't really fit into builds that well. I think to be honest, I probably will drop it down to B tier. Soul Gem. So after the buff, I'm very tempted to put Soul Gem in S+. Plus. That's an insane buff, but we'll drop it in S. Really good item for mages at the moment. Uh, provides a little bit of sustain. Obviously super good on gods that can reliably proc its effects, like Yannis. Like Yannis' portals and his three just uh, apply a stack of Soul Gem, even if they don't hit an enemy. Like they, if they hit Yannis, it kind of like counts as that. And just a really solid item. Extra burst damage, healing, power, pretty much everything you would need. Pythe Piece. Decent, not amazing. Obviously, if you're an assault, you might want this, uh, but in general, like, this is kind of just like an okay item. It's not really that insane. Bancroft's Talon, probably A as well. Like, you can maybe argue it's S, but I don't think it's as good as some of the items up here, to be honest. Obviously, if you're Anubis or if you're Hades or something, it's really good. And Bancroft's Claw kind of, like, makes me want to put this item up a little bit. But Bancroft's Claw is getting nerfed, and I don't want to put too much emphasis on the glyphs, because I will be ranking the glyphs individually. Uh, Typhon's probably same tier as Bancroft. These two items kind of live and die together. Like, often if you're building Typhon's, you're also building Bancroft's, or at least you're having, like, a couple of other lifesteal items in your build. Stone of Binding, it's okay. Uh... The flat pen on it is quite good. I mean, it's not flat pen, but it's kind of flat pen. One of, one of, if not the only tier two item left in the game at this point. So it doesn't have an upgrade path and you're often selling a late game, which does hurt it a little bit as an option. But if you're wanting to be super aggressive, uh, mostly on supports in the early game, like magical supports, you can buy this. Son of Fowl, probably in a similar vein. Uh, it's, it's too situational, I feel like, this item. Like, it's good in terms of, like, the damage mitigation is really powerful, and it, in theory, should be decent on, like, auto-attack mages, but you lose so much damage for buying it is the problem. Like, if there was some kind of auto-attacking magical bruiser that might want this item, like, I guess you could go for that, but it's just a little bit hard to fit in your build for the most part. And you know what? This list is looking very top-heavy at the moment, so I might just shift things around, move, th move things down, like, periodically, so it's not, like, all the items are, like, S and A tier, maybe, like, all the items are A and B tier. All right, there we go. So I just shifted things around a little bit, so we have a little bit less items in, like, the very top tiers and a little bit more, like, towards the center of the list. Uh, Voidstone, it's okay. Really, this item is just, like, it's for magical soul laners, pretty much. Uh, it gives, like, okay stats, but really, it's not that great. And Chile, it's kind of good at counting, like, certain specific gods. Like, it's good against Anubis, because when he, like, threes and then ones you get silenced out of this one and stuff so like it can be good in like certain matchups but really it's just too situational cad shield i think it's better than rod of asclepius because the stats that it gives are just better for like the gods that want it and also a lot of the warriors that you're building it on will just have really good self sustain and you don't necessarily need to build it just because you're a healer warrior like guan or something you can build this on like achilles or mulan and especially with soul eater and be pretty happy about it so i think this item is pretty solid runic did get buffed in the recent patch i think it's pretty solid uh, especially if you want to be like an anti-mage uh Really good in soul lane, actually, against Guardians, because Guardians don't have that much power in the first place, and so you're reducing, like, pretty much their power to, like, close to zero by uh, buying this item in the early game, which is pretty solid. Uh, Toxic Blade... It's okay. I think Shadow Steel Shuriken is a better option in terms of anti heal at the moment, especially because a lot of the builds are going crit. But like Toxic Blade is okay if you want anti healing basic attacks if you're not going crit. Relic Dagger, pretty solid item. Uh, mostly bought on supports, if anything, because they have like the most impactful like team fight relics that you absolutely want to reduce the cooldown of. Wind Blade, it's okay. Situational against slows, with whatever. Uh, Witch Blade, kind of a similar thing. Like if your enemy team has a lot of attack speed characters, you might want Witch Blade. It is one of the better attack speed reducing items in the game, I would say. How do the Nemean Lion? I I just think this item's not good right now. Like, I really just think it's not good. Uh, the amount of protections you require just to get a few block stacks really isn't that amazing. Uh, Breastplate of Valor, solid item. Should it be S? I don't think it should be S. It should probably be A. Uh, has decent glyphs. The glyphs on Breastplate are actually a little bit underwhelming, but it does have glyphs, so that's like a benefit for the item. And in general, it just has decent stats. You know, it has physical protection and cooldown reduction. That's pretty much what you're going to want for like your first item in solo and in a lot of warrior matchups. But the problem is, it's just kind of being outclassed by a lot of other physical defense options, like mainly Glad Shield, to be honest, uh, in the early game. So you're not really seeing a lot of Breastplate, but it is still a decent option. Also, after my rearrangement, I didn't move Void Shield down. Now, Void Shield should probably be a B tier item, I think. It's not on the level of a lot of the ones that are in here. Contagion, I guess I'll put it in B. I kind of want to drop it in C, to be honest. Uh, Contagion and Pestilence both, they just don't seem like that good as anti-heal options. Like, one, you have to be close to people, so it's not like with uh, Divine Ruin and Brawlers where you can just ping someone with your ability from afar and then they're going to be having, like, reduced healing for a long time. You have to, like, be really in the face with it. And also, it's less anti-heal reducing than it is for, um, 
for brawlers and stuff like like this is better against like major team healers i guess because like you can aura anti heal like everyone that's getting healed whereas with brawlers and divine you're only applying it to one person but brawlers and divine are a lot better for like smaller healers or for self sustain Spectral Armor, A tier. Uh, with the amount of crit going around right now, Spectral Armor is boosted up slightly. I think in, in a general meta, this will probably be B because of how situational it is, but pretty much every hunter is going crit right now, and uh, so you pretty much want Spectral Armor against that. It's really good against crit builds. Shogun's really solid item, to be honest. Um... Is it S? I don't think it's S, to be honest, but, like, this item just gives really good stats. Like, the fact that the 30% attack speed aura also applies to you, just, uh, really good, honestly. You know, the Shozert combination for solo lane auto-attackers, Shoguns and Zerk Shield giving, like, so much attack speed, but also tanky stats of both kinds as well. Really solid combo. Genji's Guard, pretty premium magical defense option at the moment. That little burst of cooldown reduction can be really useful, like, if you drop your whole kit on someone and then a mage drops their kit on you in return, you get a bit of your cooldowns refunded and you can kind of, like, continue to fight a little bit more. Uh, definitely one of the better solo lane magical defense options. Only Hunters, I don't know if I want to put it in the same tier as Genji's because it is worse, but I don't know if it's worse enough that I want to drop it down to B tier. I don't think it's quite a B tier item. I think Only Hunters is still really solid. Like, damage mitigation, as I've been saying throughout the video, is really good. Bulwark of Hope, I will drop in B tier, though. I think it is one of the worst magical defense options. I would pretty much always rather go, like, Only Hunters or Genji's Guard in place of Bulwark. Pestilence, also B tier. Same reason as Contagion. I think the anti-heal on it is a little bit underwhelming to be honest but it is good against like big team healers and also the stats on it are just pretty efficient i think it's like 250 health 80 magical props uh talisman this is gonna be a spicy take i know a lot of people like this item but i don't think it's very good i think the fact that it relies on like minions and jungle monsters or whatever or i mean gods as well but like the fact that it relies on things dying around you to get any kind of value in the team fight just i don't really like that kind of effect and i don't think it's strong enough to warrant like building because that effect is kind of hard to get off and the benefit for it just isn't, like, the payoff isn't good enough to, like, warrant using that. How about Amulet? Solid magical defense option for supports. Uh, obviously, it gives your teammates magical props as well. So, like, in general, this item's just been, like, solid on supports for, like, the longest time. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it's solid. Stone of Gaia. I'll drop in, like, B tier. Uh, it's kind of hard to get this effect off a lot of the time. Uh, it is decent sustain, but the fact that it comes with no props as well is kind of, like, difficult to justify in your build. Mail of Renewal. Very solid. Probably not warranting of S, I don't think. But, yeah, Mail of Renewal. Very good, especially in supports and solos builds. Uh, just that burst healing. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Uh, Shield of Regrowth did get buffed recently. It's just too situational, unfortunately. I really do like this item, you know, on gods like Hercules. You can just kind of, like, press 3 and, like, zoom around the back line. But in reality, it's way too situational to be good. It's okay on a few characters, like a few specific characters, but even on the characters it's okay on, it's not like their best item or anything like that. It's just like you can build it on them. Uh, Gauntlet of Thebes, straight up to S+, plus, has always been one of the best items in the game, to be honest. Insanely stat efficient for the cost. Obviously, it's a support item, so that's why it's so stat efficient for the cost, and you kind of have to build it on supports. You can kind of get away with building it later game on some solo laners because you can, like, stack it up easily in team fights. but in terms of rushing this item, only supports are going to be doing that, but they buffed it recently. 55 now of each protections, or 65 if you include the aura, so like 65 of each prots and 300 health on an item that costs like a little bit over 2,000 gold. That's just insane. This item's so strong. Lotus Crown, it's decent. I think I'll probably drop it in A. It could also be in B, to be honest. Yeah, maybe I will drop it in B, actually. It's very situational, but it's, it's pretty good on certain gods. Like, obviously, Baron support or, like, healer supports in general kind of like this item. And you can kind of get away with going it on mids sometimes. Like, certain mid healers uh, that really want to, like, keep themselves alive against, like, a physical dive, you can kind of build this. But I don't think it's, like, that good of an item, really. Tyrannical Plate Helm, B again. Sadly, this item just never sees play, even though, in theory, it could be really good. Uh, it's only real application, I suppose, is, like, uh, soul laners, like, that really want to get, like, a heavy push going, but it's just not that good. Celestial Legion Helm, again, similar thing. Even though, in theory, this should be pretty good against the crit meta, it's just, like, it's kind of understated for the cost and the effects, like, you lose so much damage if you're going this on a magical mid. Jade Emperor's Crown did get buffed recently. I think it's pretty solid. Obviously, kind of an alternative to Sovereignty in a way, because... Uh, similar stats and you're reducing enemies power instead of giving your allies more props so it kind of achieves the same goal urchin underrated item in my opinion not s but uh very solid in terms of the stats that it provides it, and obviously it's a little bit easier to stack up nowadays than it has been in the past spirit robe they buffed it i don't know why uh this is close to being an s plus tier item to be honest but i think i will drop it in s it's probably not quite as good as these ones up here decent stats for the cost and that really powerful passive that gives you a ton of damage mitigation just super strong mantle of discord probably up here as well you could argue it maybe should be down here, though. 
Yeah, maybe maybe down here. I don't think it's quite as good as Spirit Robe, especially since they reduced the cost of Spirit Robe. But you can definitely go Mantle in your build as well. Mantle's really solid and does have a little bit of a different application, even though they're kind of similar items. Magi's, uh, Magi's is Magi's. We'll, we'll drop it in A. Uh, has some decent glyphs now, which is nice because uh, it always had a bit of a problem where like it just didn't really give much for the cost. Like when you had this in your full six item build, you just had less stats than someone else because uh, you wanted that really powerful effect. But of course now it has the glyphs, which is uh, kind of nice in addition to that. But Obviously, you're mostly building this on, like, your squishies that are getting, like, really focused out by hard CC in the back line. Midgardia Mail, one of the worst uh, attack speed killing options in the game, to be honest. You're almost always better off with Witchblade. Then again, it's better than Nemean, probably. Maybe it should be up here. Yeah, I suppose I'll drop it in B, but it's definitely on the lower end of B. It could also be C tier, to be honest, depending on how you look at the game. Uh, Sovereignty in the same place as Jade Empress, to be honest, and Heart Watch. Just a really solid support option that gives you uh, you, you and your allies a bunch of prots, and uh, the HP 5 is nice as well. Doesn't really get built in solo lane all that much anymore because of the HP 5 nerf, but still pretty solid over there as well. Mystical Mail got buffed recently quite substantially. Uh, I probably would have had it in B before, but I think with the buffs, it probably does become an A tier item. Of course, pretty much only a solo lane option, but gives you that extra poke, the extra wave clear from uh, the mystical mail takes deals magical damage which is nice because most of the time they're going to be building physical defense against you so the magical defense goes through a little bit easier and finally emperor's armor it's okay i think i'll drop it in b because it's quite situational it's mainly only if you're like getting heavy sieged or you need to siege and you can't really like break their siege just like you might want this item but uh generally it's not like that insane and so yeah that's the full items tier list i will zoom out so if you guys want to get a screenshot we actually ended up with no d tier items but i think that's fair like d tier i mostly put there for like items that literally you should never build like and i don't think even these items you shouldn't never build them they're like they cannot be okay but yeah there's your full item tier list if you want to take a screenshot of that i'm going to remove these and uh rank the final glyphs uh for the for the end of the video so all right so let's finish off this video with just ranking the glyphs here because why not may as well uh magi's revenge probably the better option from the magi's glyphs i would say it's pretty decent to be honest makes magi's very solid for like aggressive chase down uh magi's shelter probably a pretty solid as well you know giving those bubbles to your allies in the back line is really good for a support but uh, it's kind of difficult to fit this in your build as a support because you yourself don't really need the magi's uh the breastplate glyphs are both pretty trash to be honest uh i probably won't put them in d tier I mean, I guess D tier for the glyphs is kind of pointless because you wouldn't never build any of these glyphs because you might have the base item. But yeah, I think in terms of glyphs, both breastplate glyphs are pretty bad, to be honest. They just don't really have that much of an impact. Uh, Bancroft's Claw, obviously S+. Plus. This item's dominating the meta right now on Hades Solo. Just a really solid one, giving a ton of shields. Nimble Bancroft's, I think, is solid as well. Not as good as Bancroft's Claw, but on those gods that want attack speed, the only problem with Nimble Bancroft's is that, like, Bancroft's in itself is hard to fit in those builds um but the glyph itself is really solid perfected rod really good a uh, bunch of extra cooldown reduction in fact now that i'm looking at this let's do this because perfected rod is definitely better than better than these like that extra burst cooldown reduction is really good especially on gods that have like uh, a lot of the mages that have like a uh, two ability like two basic ability damage combo so like hera for example or hebo for example like once you hit those two abilities you get a cooldown refresh is really good the meteor rod is slightly less good i think but it can be very solid on gods that have like an easy confirm where like when they hit their ability out of combat it will like cc them immediately into a meteor it can be good on those kind of gods uh the heart wall glyphs they're okay i'll probably put them both in b they're a little bit better than the breastplate glyphs but they're nothing really groundbreaking uh Mal Malicious Deathbringer is decent. It's kind of hard to fit in builds as the problem because a lot of the time if you're going for a crit build, you're like a heavily auto attack based god and you don't really need that ability cooldown reduction. But in theory, it could be a really good item. Envenom Deathbringer is like the better version of, of the Glyph in my opinion. Obviously, all Poison Star was a really popular item and having that effect just on your Deathbringer is really good. Heavy XE is decent now in my opinion with a 1.9 attack speed buff. Uh, it's a little bit situational in terms of that like you need to kind of build around it and play it on specific characters. Like you don't want this on a Hunter with an attack speed steroid because you're just going to massively overcap. Uh, but it can be good on certain basic attacking assassins and certain hunters. Ferocious Executioner, obviously the better version uh, that most hunters will be building when they put XE in their build, just uh, having that extra, like, boxing potential. Really good. Jones Cunning, very similar to Perfected Rod in that, like, once you land a couple of those abilities, you're going to get that burst cooldown reduction. It's just really good uh, for the same reason Perfected Rod is good. And the other Jotuns, I'll probably put in, like, B. It's definitely significantly worse than the other Jotuns. But, yeah, that's the Glyphs as well. So, if you're looking for what you're going to build in your Glyphs, uh, these are the ones you should be building. But, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, it, was, it was a very long video, so I tried to go, like, a little bit more in-depth on a lot of these items and, like, explain why I'm placing them where I'm placing them rather than just being, like, Glad Shield OP. Let's put it in S+. Plus. Like, uh, some people might not know why it's like specifically so good so i thought i'd uh, go more in depth on my explanations of things 
Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. I'll probably end up remaking this video when Season 10 launches because I imagine there'll be a ton of new balance changes. But I thought I'd make it now and then uh, as like kind of a prototype, I suppose, for when I make uh, an official Season 10 item tier list. So if you guys want to see that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out, you nerds.